banana bunty top virus is the most devastating banana virus disease in the world. Um, in Australia, it is found in northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland, and it affects all varieties. So once a plant has bunty top, it stunts the growth of the plant and stops it from producing fruit. So once a banana plant is infected, it won't ever recover. So bunty top spread in two ways. So it's spread by the banana aphid, and that aphid is specific to banana plants. And it's also spread by distributing infected planting material. So bunchy top's been in Australia for over 100 years now. It was first found in Australia in 1913, and it was thought to be brought in by uh, planting material from Fiji. We've managed to be able to control bunchy top uh, to southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales. And in some parts of the world, bunchy top has actually wiped out whole industries um, when it's been left to get out of control. This lady finger here has bunchy top disease. It's throw in a bunch, which is quite rare. But as you can see, the fruit is really small and the bunch is deformed and it won't progress much past this stage. It also has really typical leaf symptoms, which is the narrowing and the feathering of the leaf. So once bunchy top is in a commercial farm, it can spread quite quickly uh, via the banana aphid. Uh, it can also be spread by digging up infected planting material and, and planting that around your farm. So it's a great idea to get your material from a registered supplier, so getting Cuban accredited planting material from a reputable nursery. There is no prevention for aphids spreading bunchy top uh, through your banana plants, but there are some on-farm practices that will help. Keeping uh, your plants de-leafed, keeping them de-suckered, and maintaining good weed control. We've got three leaves here. We've got a, a really advanced stage leaf from a ladyfinger. Uh, it's got lines and hooks in the leaf, but it's got really distinctive lines running up and down the ribs, as you can see right there. Our next leaf we got is a uh, leaf that's off a sucker from it, and you can see the dot dashes in the leaf and the hooks running into the rib, which is very distinctive. And here we have a clean leaf, which has just these margin lines that go right across, but none of those dark dot dashes that run into the leaf and no hooks into the rib and no lines up and down the rib. So when we're inspecting bunchy top, it's really important that we get the infection as early as possible. This helps with the spread of bunchy top. So if we can pick a plant up that has, say, only one or two leaves showing the infection, the chances are that it hasn't moved on to other plants around. But if we pick a plant up that's showing, say, four or more leaves uh, with the infection, the chances are that it, it may have spread to other plants on the property. So when we're inspecting bunchy top, it's important that we do get a visual on, on the new leaf of each plant. So that requires walking through each row of the patch and, and looking up at each plant. It's a good idea when you're walking through a banana patch and looking for bunchy top is to look ahead and up maybe four to six plants ahead of you to get a good overall visual of the plant. And then if you suspect a plant has bunchy top, walking up to it and taking a closer look by taking the new leaf and, and having a look. I've got a bunchy top here. You can just see the leaf's just sort of that bit lighter colour than all the others, sort of that shape. Um, once we find them, we tag them so we can define them. They stand out, we know where they are for later on when we come back to destroy them. Um, you can see the lines very clearly. The dot dash lines very clearly in the leaf. And the lines in the stem. Oh, I just spotted this one, it's just a bit shorter leaf compared to the others. I'm just starting to yellow off a little bit around the edge. After we tag them, we record them on the phone with the GPS like number of infected leaves on it. So this one's just a one leaf, so it's only a week or two old, really. Um, and then we come back through and we inject it with Roundup and Comfortor, and then spray the whole bunch with uh, 
by biopest oil. We also take the whole clump out that it's connected to, so all these ones here will have to go, all these other suckers. And then we'll check, check closely around this plant for other infected plants. Uh, here we have another one, real advanced. These are what most people would pick up on the real short leaf, real thin, frail, really yellowed around the edges. You can see the lines from a distance. This one would be very older, or a lot older, more infected. We just found it not far from the last one. So what we're doing is injecting into the stem with the, the glyphosate solution. So this will destroy the plant. We have to make sure that we get all the stems and all the suckers. It will take a few weeks for that plant to die off. And now we're injecting into the stem a uh, imidacloprid comfortor solution. So this is a systemic insecticide and that will help kill any aphids that are on the plant. And now we're just spraying with Sokoa Biopest oil. So this is a paraffin oil and what that does is kills the aphids in the throat of the plant. We make sure we do around the base as well as some aphids like to hang around at the base of the plant. So this process is our most preferred process of destruction as it kills the plant and kills the aphids quite easily without disturbing them. So the next process that we're going to demonstrate is the manual destruction. So this is if someone doesn't want chemicals used. Okay, we're going to dig this plant out. We've sprayed it with biopest oil, which is going to kill the aphids on the plant. Um, when digging a plant out, you can either do it with a spade or matic, but the, the important thing is to get down as low as possible the lower you get it to the base of the plant, it is going to be a lot easier to dig out. Okay, well I'm going to dig this one out today with me matic. As I said, it's already been sprayed, so the aphids are all dead. It's important to get it all out. There's still a bit of corn left in here. Okay, I've got it all out of the ground now. And now we come along with our knife and we cut this up into little bits and as, as we get up towards the leaf we'll spray it all again with biopest oil to kill the aphids. Okay we've chopped it up now we're spraying all the leaves to get rid of all those aphids and, and the more we chop it up it will decompose a lot quicker it'll break down and uh, less chance of this chance of a door shooting again. So to stop it spreading, we basically need uh, community support to um, let people know about bunchy top and, and not to distribute planting material, and also to commercial growers uh, to, to keep on top of bunchy top in their patches. Bunchy top can be quite devastating and can spread quite quickly. So if, if you do spot bunchy top, the, the best thing you can do is report it to us. So contact the Bunchy Top Project and we'll be in touch and, and organise an inspector to come and have a look at your plants and then we can take the next step to destroy them if they are infected. So the, the control of Bunchy Top really relies on community and grower support. So we really need the, the backyarders and hobby farmers and the wider community to be proactive in detecting bunchy top and, and reporting it, as well as the growers doing their part as well, have, taking a, a, an active role in finding, detecting and destroying bunchy top on their farms. So the, the Bunchy Top project is really just here to help um, keep bunchy top under control in commercial and, and backyards. So together we can help control bunchy top in Australia and keep our industry a viable one.